Hello, my name is Kurt Emanuel. I am a Purdue University Extension Educator uh, located in Boone County, Indiana, which is just a little bit northwest of Indianapolis. Uh, and for reference, I want to note that today is April 18th, 2020. What I'm going to do today is demonstrate for you how to build a brain barrel inexpensively and easily using a few materials you should be able to acquire locally as well as some common household tools. I first started giving this program about 10 or 12 years ago. I would be giving a program on landscape or horticulture and at some point in time I would mention rain barrels and quite often someone would make a comment similar to this. I have looked into getting a rain barrel but when I go online to think about buying one, it's just way too expensive. They're $100 to $150, that just doesn't seem worthwhile to me. So that set me about thinking of why would a rain barrel cost $100? We're talking a plastic barrel and a couple of fittings that should not cost too much. So I set about uh, you know, building my own and then I developed this program uh, from that experience. So I've been doing this program now uh, roughly 10 or 12 years, uh, do it probably two, three times a year in person. Uh, here, uh, I am going to go ahead and videotape a portion of that. I should note that when I do this program in person, uh, there is I spend some time discussing the benefits of rain barrels, both environmentally and from a homeowner landscape situation. I'm going to make the assumption that if you clicked on this link and are viewing this, you've already done that investigation yourself, you're interested in rain barrels, um, so I'm going to set that part aside. So. Let's get started with just talking about what we need, what materials do we need in order to be able to build our own rain barrel at home. Okay, first material that I consider necessary is some sort of fitting. Uh, this fitting would be uh, what I'm going to call a drain fitting. This one here happens to be a hose bib. And the key factors on this for me is that this fitting needs to be three quarters of an inch and that represents the thread size down here and the threads and also must have some sort of attachment at the end of it that you can hook a common garden hose onto. So again, this one here is a hose bib. Uh, there are also boiler drains, different types of fittings. This one is made out of nylon, uh, which is what I use for this demonstration. And again, 10, 12 years ago, I think these cost something like $2.99. I don't, I, I've never removed the tag, uh, but uh, I think they're a little more now, but they're still fairly inexpensive. You will need two of these. The other part of the material you will need, in my opinion, is some sort of Teflon plumber's tape. This is tape we would wrap around the threads of our fitting uh, in order to reduce leakage and ensure a tighter seal. Along the same lines, I think you should have some sort of plumber's cement or caulk. Uh, something to, again, ensure that you can have a tighter seal in case you get some leakage. And they're also good as a longer term maintenance, uh, uh, maintenance uh, asset. Uh, because that, you know, as time goes on, you may develop a leak in your rain barrel and that would be on hand to be able to help with that. The other item that you will need is a piece of mosquito netting. Now, this is a small piece just for demonstration purposes. Uh, you would want to size this to fit the opening of your rain barrel. However, you are going to receive rainwater into your rain barrel. The reason is pretty simple. Uh, when we use a rain barrel, we are basically creating a pool of stagnant water. Mosquitoes love stagnant water. Having this mosquito netting in place will prevent them from being able to land in your rain barrel, lay eggs, which will hatch into larvae, and which will become adult mosquitoes. So again, this is small for demonstration size. You will need to size that and secure it relative to whatever system you have set up for your rain barrel. Now, that's the, mater the other material, excuse me, I almost forgot the most vital part, is obviously your barrel, okay? This is a... 55-gallon uh, barrel I purchased, again, 10 or 12 years ago from Rural King. Uh, your barrel hopefully would not have all these holes in them. This is my demonstration barrel, and obviously I do not um, buy a new barrel every time I do this demonstration. Uh, very inexpensive, very utilitarian. There's nothing fancy about this barrel. Uh, part of the reason why the cost, uh, as I'm going to be demonstrating this for you, uh, is so inexpensive. Uh, when you look at the barrel, uh, one of the things that we will talk about a little bit later on, uh, once you receive your barrel, you should rinse it out. Uh, again, most of these have had food grade products. They've probably been rinsed out before whoever bought them put them into storage. They don't want an insect attractant any more than you do. However, it's still a good idea to rinse them out once you receive that and make sure any of that has been removed. 
Okay, now let's go to the equipment list that we need, which is not much. <clears throat> First piece of equipment you need is a 15, 16 inch spade drill bit. And again, I wanna emphasize a spade bit, not a rotary bit. And I'll explain why here in a minute. Obviously, you will need something to drive the bit. Uh, maybe not as large as that, but uh, use what you have available. And the other thing you'll need is a pocket knife, okay? And when I say pocket knife, I want to mention that not only does your pocket knife not need to be sharp, in many ways it is better if it is not sharp, if it's somewhat dull. And I'll demonstrate that once we get uh, about building our bar rain barrel. So with that, we have our materials, we have our tools, and let's go ahead and set about building our barrel. For any rain barrel, you will have two holes that you need to drill. One is at the bottom, that would be our irrigation hole. Uh, the other would be at the top, that would be what we would call our overflow drain. So I am going to drill a new uh, irrigation drain towards the bottom. We would select a location uh, probably a few inches above the direct bottom of the barrel, and then we would just simply start to drill. With that, we have just drilled our drain hole. Now, here comes the purpose for the knife. You notice all these little plastic kind of imperfections here, what I call plastic shavings. Uh, the purpose of the knife is not to actually impact the hole we've just drilled, but to get all of these out of the way. We do not want all of these fittings to be impacting uh, the threads when we install our fittings. Uh, they could interfere with us having a good tight seal, uh, any imperfections is something we want, we want to avoid. What I am not doing with this knife, the reason why dull is actually better, is I'm not changing the hole at all. In fact, I want that hole to be a little bit rough uh, because a rough hole actually is a little better for grabbing the threads on my fitting. So let's go about installing the fitting. Now the next step I would normally talk about doing would be installing your Teflon tape I did that ahead of time because I didn't figure anybody here uh, needed to uh, spend any time watching me uh, tape my barrel. So let's line this up. So we pretty much have to just line our fitting up. This one's not wanting to line up great. We'll see. We'll try to soldier on. Sometimes they seem to line up better and sometimes not as well. And we have to apply a little pressure. And then the fitting will just start to screw itself in. The nylon is actually harder than the plastic and actually it's almost like a self-tapping screw where it will actually uh, create its own threads as we're screwing this in. Uh, so I would normally, if I was actually gonna build this rain barrel for my own use, I would screw it in much farther. However, for the perspective of demonstration purposes, I'll be taking this right out as soon as we get done with this demonstration. Uh, but that demonstrates how to do the fitting. Now we would just repeat the same exact process for the top of our rain barrel, and that would largely complete our construction of our rain barrel. We would have our irrigation drain, we would have our overflow drain, and our rain barrel is complete, um, really with, for the most part, a plastic barrel and two fairly inexpensive nylon fittings. So that is it, right? We have just built ourselves our fittings on our rain barrel. Now I do not recommend you uh, pick up a rain barrel by the fitting, but you can. This fitting is in there, it is solid, it's not going anywhere. Again, will it leak? Maybe. If it does, you apply a little bit of sealant to it. Uh, we would repeat the process for the top of the barrel. Again, uh, that would be our overflow drain. Uh, you will need to have done a little bit of planning ahead of time uh, to decide exactly where you want to place your drains, depending on where you want the water to outflow and where you want to irrigate. I want to mention that the bottom drain, your irrigation drain, should remain closed except when you're uh, irrigating something. And the top drain should, as it's your overflow, should always be open. And sometimes it's a good idea to uh, add a hose to it uh, so that that overflow water will go to a location of your choosing. The other item I have not discussed in rain barrel preparation is the size of the opening at the top. Again, you will need to determine that based on your situation and what you are looking to do. Now, I have taken the entire top off this barrel, right? I've cut it out. 
Uh, that has nothing to do with how I might want to receive or not receive water through it. Um, it has to do with the fact that when I'm not doing this program, this barrel sits in my barn. And uh, it is much easier for me to rinse it out uh, when uh, the entire top is off. Uh, last summer, the last time I gave this program in person, uh, was at a country club in their dining room. You don't want to take something in the dining room of a country club and then have spiders start running around. So that is the main reason for that. Uh, one other thing I should mention is, is before you fill this up with water, of course, once you have it built, you're going to want to fill it up with water. But before you do that, you should first rinse it out very well. Uh, there will be... chunks of plastic in this barrel. Those things pop through when I was drilling, right? Uh, there will be smaller chunks of plastic, which there are, but I won't, but, uh, so you wanna make sure these are rinsed out and they're removed from the barrel before you fill it up with water and actually turn on your drains. Otherwise they could get into the drains and clog them. Um, but once you've built it, you fill it up with water, let it sit for a little while, see if there's any leaks. If there are, you go ahead and, and empty it out and then apply some sealant. Um, but this type of rain barrel should last for a good long time. There's one other essential part of a rain barrel that I have not covered yet at all, and I'm not gonna cover it in a lot of detail, um, but that is the stand. A rain barrel should not sit flat on the ground in a landscape setting. This is a 55 gallon barrel. Each gallon of water weighs about eight pounds. So filled, this weighs over 400 pounds. You do not want this sitting in an uneven spot. Uh, it could twist. It, as it gets warmer, it'll flex more. You could actually tip it over. It will really reduce the life of your barrel. Uh, so what you would like to do is build a, a level, firm stand for it. It can be out of wood. It can be concrete blocks and some wood and some two by sixes. It can be really whatever works for you. But a flat level surface to place your barrel on is uh, an essential component. The other thing I have not discussed is how you actually hook your barrel into your into your home. Uh, the Purdue Extension Rainscaping Education Team has a very good video demonstrating this. Uh, they talk about different guttering systems. They talk about uh, different diverters. Um, I actually recommend that you might want to click on that link uh, and go to that video and watch it um, sort of as a companion to this because they, they do go into a lot of detail and it has a lot of great information on it. Okay, so that is it. Uh, we've just demonstrated how to build a rain barrel inexpensively and quickly, usually materials you should be able to purchase locally as well as some simple household tools. Thank you for watching.